The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why do you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 4. The people of Israel continued their trip. There was no water available at their next encampment. You would think that by then they would have realized that God is capable of providing for their needs. Instead, they took their complaints to Moses and put the Lord to the test. Rather than putting their faith in the Lord who had delivered them and supplied for them, they chose to put their faith in themselves. Their dissatisfaction was so great that they threatened to stone Moses. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Exodus chapter 17, verses 5 through 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. New King James Version. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. Exodus chapter 18, verse 5, New King James Version. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness, where he was encamped at the mountain of God. Hence, the water flows from God's mountain the place of God's presence. Moses was kindly instructed by God to take his staff and strike the rock at Horeb, notwithstanding Israel's indecisiveness. When he did, water mysteriously spilled out for the benefit of the onlookers to consume. Masa, which means testing, and Meribah, which means quarreling, were the names Moses gave to the locations because Israel had disobeyed the Lord there. The Israelites were embarking on a path of regular disobedience that would lead to pain and disappointment, despite the fact that God provided for them despite their wickedness. Eventually, God would get dissatisfied with their steadfast refusal to put their faith in Him, and He would prevent that generation from ever entering the country. Numbers chapter 14, verses 20 through 23, King James Version. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. Later, the author of Psalm 95 would warn God's people not to test the Lord like the Israelites of Moses' day. Psalms 95, verses 7 through 11, AMP. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts and become spiritually dull as at Meribah, the place of strife, and as at Massa, the place of testing in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, even though they had seen my work of miracles. For forty years I was grieved and disgusted with that generation, and I said, They are a people who err in their heart, and they do not acknowledge or regard my ways. Therefore I swore an oath in my wrath, They absolutely shall not enter my rest, the land of promise. Still later, the author of Hebrews warned Christians about the same thing, pointing to Psalm 95. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 9 through 17, NLT. That is why the Holy Spirit says, Today when you hear His voice, 
Don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. There your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for forty years. So I was angry with them, and I said, Their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Remember what it says, Today when you hear His voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. And who was it who rebelled against God even though they heard His voice? Wasn't it the people Moses led out of Egypt? And who made God angry for forty years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose corpses lay in the wilderness? And to whom was God speaking when He took an oath that they would never enter His rest? Wasn't it the people who disobeyed Him? So we see that because of their unbelief, they were not able to enter His rest. The fact that all of these things were written for our instruction should not be overlooked. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the culmination of the ages has come. When God's people learned to rely on God for provision, they learned a valuable lesson about authority. The Lord provided what they required time and time again, confirming His authority to lead them. Moses learned to rely on God as the absolute authority. One of the keys to Moses' greatness is the statement, Moses cried out to the Lord. Exodus chapter 17, verse 4. So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. Leaders obtain their authority. Few people just give it to someone. God earned the trust of His people and earned His authority through several means. First, through production. He made a way for His people to cross the Red Sea safely. Second, through protection. He eliminated the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Third, through provision. He provided manna and quail for the people to eat. Fourth, through problem-solving. He produced water from a rock. The people insisted that Moses produce water to satiate their thirst. God entrusted Moses with directions for how to provide water for their needs. God instructed Moses to take the rod and strike a rock. From this improbable source, God provided water to meet the people's need. The faithless Israelites were reassured that the Lord would take care of them by bringing water from a rock. The rock of God continues to sustain God's people throughout all of redemptive history. Centuries after God's miraculous provision from a rock in the wilderness, Jesus confronted another group of disagreeable people. This time the Pharisees and the Sadducees asked Him to show them a sign to confirm His authority. Jesus, knowing their hearts, refused to entertain their demands. Instead, He took His disciples to a remote, mountainous location at Caesarea Philippi and there gave them a definitive object lesson. He asked his comrades to describe the public opinion regarding his identity. Peter, as the outspoken leader of Jesus' inner circle, stated that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, NIV. Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. These titles were not mere flattery, but indicated that Peter understood Jesus to be the long-awaited king in the line of David. Jesus responded to Peter, whose name means rock, telling him that this confession would be the basis of the foundation of his church. Jesus will build his church on this truth, and nothing, not even the gates of hell, will be able to destroy his church. Matthew chapter 16, verses 17 and 18, NIV. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. 
And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. This rock will supply water for God's people for days without end. Jesus himself will give rivers of living water to his people in the church. Those who acknowledge their thirst can come to Jesus and be satisfied. Not only that, but the Spirit of God will engulf them with streams of living water to satisfy their thirst eternally. John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, NIV. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified.